Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Cashflow Pirate Podcast. My name is Richard and I don't know if I've said this the last couple of episodes but I suppose I better explain what the hell this podcast is again briefly. So if you haven't listened before this is just a recording of my history of my journey on me trying to make money preferably online. The ultimate goal is to become self-sustainable doing my own things trying to make my own money without having to get a, a regular job and this is just my my story my journey so th- the idea is just to hopefully give you some ideas but mainly just for my own accountability so i can say i'm going to do things on here and then hopefully do them and if i don't you guys can can nag me and ask me why i haven't done them yet so it's just a way of um keeping track of what i do and what is working and what isn't working And I'll share with you everything that does and doesn't work. And any money that I make, I will also share. So you'll find out how much I'm actually earning doing all the little things that I'm going to try. So there you go. I probably need to work on the the pitch of the podcast a bit as I'm just doing it off the top of my head. But one day I'll narrow that down so it's a a bit quicker. Anyway, so the last couple of episodes have been a little, little bit instructional slash ranty. So I'm going back to a more of an idea this week. So I thought it'd be cool to share it with you. So as the podcast is, well, it's loosely called Stay On Course at the minute, but by the time you hear this, it's probably not going to be called that. So this week I'm going to be talking to you about the idea that I that I had, that I want to create a course. You know, But don't worry, I'm not here to sell you a course. I'm just here to explain and talk about how how the whole idea started and how I'm going to go about getting it done. Because right now, I have no course and no content for a course. N- nothing. Why the hell would I want to start a course if I have nothing? So, like I said from the start of this podcast, I'm not here to tell you what you should do to make money or or anything. I'm just here to share my adventure, my journey. And, you know, while, while I figure stuff out, I'm just here to share it with you. Sometimes I have some cool information. You know, I, I do read lots and watch lots. So if I have any cool information or things that I think might benefit, you know, someone who's maybe a couple of steps just behind me, still just maybe just starting, I'll share any cool info I have. So that's 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 what I do now and again. So I just wanted to sort of go through the story of, you know, how I got to the point of thinking, you know, I'm going to build a course, um, and hopefully. It, you know, it will show you that how the story will sort of, how can I explain it? It will show you how doing things can really help. And, and that's, that's a bit vague, but doing things and recognising the opportunities that get put in front of you can really help you without you even knowing about it. So that, again, and it's not going to make, without the context of the story, this is not going to make much sense. So let me just, so it's a bit of a story. I'm just going to go through some of the things that have happened to me in the last couple of years, which kind of lead to why I'm at this point now and why I want to create a course. So so let's let's get started. Why a course? Well, from a personal point of view, I actually really like teaching people. I'm not too fan of the, not not too fan. I'm not too much of a fan of the word teaching if I'm honest. I, I think the, the word that I enjoy, how do I explain it? The, for what I enjoy, it's more like I like working with people to help them get stuff done. So it's not really teaching. I don't want to just stand up and teach stuff to people. It's I like the people who want to learn something and have an interest. If I know the answer, I'm, I like working with them t- to help them understand it as well. So it's, I suppose it's teaching, but I just don't like the word, so... That's gone. Anyway, there you go. So let me give you some background of where this has all come from. So I'm going to go back a few years here, just so you can understand a bit of the context. So about four years ago, I was abruptly made redundant. And I mean, like, turning up in the morning to my regular nine to five job, where I'd worked there for a total of about eight years, um, to find the gates closed and just a sign on it on some a4 paper saying yeah we've closed 
you know, gone into liquidation. See you later. That's it. That's all I got. So I worked there for six years as a computer technician, just fixing laptops and PCs and just IT stuff, fixing crap, basically. And then after about, well, after about, after six years, I got really sick of sitting in a dark room. I mean, this room was probably four meters by four meters squared. It had no windows. It had a metal shutter that was closed. So in the summer, it heat up to ridiculous temperatures and then in winter it'd be freezing cold and i'd be sat in there with one maybe two other guys depending and we'd sit there and fix laptops all day and i'm talking we just have piles of laptops next to us fixing them but there you go that's beside the point anyway so i got sick of that after six years i listened to a hell of a lot of i listened to every single music album i owned I, you know, I don't listen to the radio anyway, so I just needed a break. I couldn't do it anymore. So I said, you know, audiobooks, I tell you what, audiobooks are a lifesaver on a, on a mind-numbingly boring job. Thank you to Mr. Audiobook person who invented that. Awesome job. I went up to the boss and just said, look, I've got a new job. I quit, basically. I can't, you know, I can't do this anymore. So I left. So I quit and I left. And now I actually went to go and do a computer technician job in another place, but it was more customer facing. So I talked to customers, explained to them what the problems were, you know, a bit more hands on with people, which was nice because I liked it. Like I said, I like explaining to people how things work and how I can help them. But the boss there was a was an idiot and he was all very money focused. So I, I didn't wasn't enjoying my time there particularly. So after six months of being at this new job, my original boss phoned me and he said, Richard, is there any chance you can come back to us? You know, I said no for the above reasons of no windows. Um, and he said, no, 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 not, not to do your old job. I want you to build and run our website because they had like a really, I mean, I remember on, I, mean, I think I remember on day one that I started at the, the company, I even said to them, you know, you do know your website's, I didn't say terrible, but outdated and could do with a revamp, something like that. It was awful. It was a, it was a terrible, terrible website, you know, like made in the 90s, like brown and blue and just horrendous colours, you know, awful. But it stayed like that for forever. And then while I was working there, I actually um, put myself, he, he asked if anyone knows anyone who can build websites. And I couldn't build websites, but... I had been slowly messing around with a bit of WordPress on on the side in my own time. So I kind of knew how to get a site up and running. And I'd done some HTML in college. and some, So I, I kind of knew some stuff. And compared to everyone else at the company who had zero idea, you know, that automatically made me the, air quotes, expert in websites at the company. So I put myself forward and said, yeah, I'll, do, I'll give it a go. I'll, I'll, I'll try. So it got me out of fixing laptops for a little while because I was just, I'd spending half a day fixing laptops and half a day doing a website. So I was starting to do bits, bits. And then before I left, I left the website and just said, there you go, you know, get someone else to take over. So my boss came back to me eventually and just said, look, can you come back and then build on the website that you already started and get it running? Because we want to sell IT hardware from that website. And, um, yeah, so that that was his offer. Um, so I managed to negotiate a, a pay increase from the last time I was there. I got my own desk with, you know, I had windows in the office. It was amazing. So I got my own desk, got a new PC. I asked for, you know, dual screens because, I'm, you know, why not? If you you got to ask, you, you don't get, do you? So I thought, well, I have to ask. So I got all that. It was an awesome setup. Um, and then I set about just trying to build a website. And I learned loads. I learned so many things about e-commerce and how to take payments. And I set all the payment system up. And um, I managed to. I loaded. I loaded stock on, and I was selling stuff on eBay and through the website and advertising it, checking Twitter. Loads of cool stuff. I, I learned so much doing that. And they were paying me to learn. When he asked, offered me the job, I did say, "Well, you know, I'm not an expert. So if you're willing to let me learn on the job, then I'll take it." He said, yeah, fine. So anyway, so that's what I did. Fast forward 18 months. Guess what happened? 
Yes. Well, you know what happened because I told you already. I was made redundant. That was it. It went into liquidation. I turned up, like I said, gone. Company had closed. No job. Nothing. That was it. So it's basically a case of like turning around and driving an hour back home again. Which is also, it's a very good point now to point out to the fact that you think you have a steady nine to five job. And people say that. No, don't do your own thing. It's better to have a steady nine to five job, a regular job. You know, this company had been there for about 18 years doing this. So it wasn't just some pop up company that I was working for. It had been there a long time. Well, a steady job wasn't so steady. So bear that in mind. So if people keep saying that to you, there's your, there's your answer. Obviously, you don't have to go into my story. But the point is, you never know. And I've been made redundant twice as well. Um, uh, maybe I'm a, a bad luck charm. But still, you never know what's going to happen. So I was made redundant. About a month later, so I had no job, which meant I had no money. Um, you know, so I did something that I spoke about last week. Uh, I say last week, last episode that I did. I joined all the local Facebook groups and I started looking for things that I could help with in my area. You know, stuff that I could get paid for, I could help with, ideally. But you know, you got to start by talking to people and seeing what problems they're having. In the in one in one of the groups, I saw someone asking. Uh, it was a lady. She was asking how do I remove a hard drive? She took a picture. She said, how do I re remove the hard drive from my laptop? Because the laptop's broken, but I know I had data on it. So I need to sort of get rid of the laptop and just take the hard drive out. Um, and this, this laptop model was like a really common one that I'd been fixing for the last seven years or whatever it was. So it was two screws to take the hard drive out. You know, I've done it a million times. Two screws to take the hard drive out and it just slides out. Simple as that. Really, really easy. So I was watching this thread and then people were replying saying, yeah, I can do that for you. Um, it's £40 to do that for you. And I was like, oh my, £40? You know, okay, I've got the I've got the benefit of knowing, knowing how easy it is, but still, they know how easy it is as well. And they're going to charge this lady £40 to take a hard drive out. I, I can't justify just watching some. So I said to her, so originally I was going to sort of say, oh yeah, I'll do it for, I'll do it for 20 or I can do it for 10 pound. That's easy. But I thought, you know, am I really going to, what am I going to gain? I might gain, if I go there and undo the screws and then take it out and then give it to the hard drive, I'm going to be there 20 seconds. And I'm not being funny, but I'm going to feel bad saying, okay, that's 20 pounds, please. That wasn't for me. So I, I sent her a message and I said, look, it's super easy if you've got a little screwdriver, I can tell you exactly what to do. You know, you don't need to pay someone to come and do it for you. But she didn't have any. She goes, no, sorry, I don't have any tools at all. And I'm really not confident on doing anything. I said, okay, fine. Um, I can see where, you know, you're in my area. I said, do you want me just to pop over and I can just do it for you? I won't charge you. I'll just come and do it for you. It won't. It will literally take me longer to walk to you than it will to actually do the job. She said, that'd be amazing. And could I pop over you know, in the next couple of hours? So I said, fine. So I went round. I took the hard drive out. She was super happy. She was like, wow, that was easy. Thank you so much. She was really grateful and amazed. At, again, amazed at how much people were trying to charge her for doing that. And, and I explained the situation to her. I said, yeah, you know, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Take care. She was very happy and I went home. Yeah, so why, why am I telling you this quite long-winded story? Well, out of all the... PC guys and, and local technicians that replied to her request originally, I could have just joined that queue. I could have just joined the you know, list of 10 names to, oh yeah, I can do that for you. Here's my details. But straight away, for the sake of, you know, like I said, two screws, I just jumped to the top of her and other people that read this this post to the top of her trust and loyalty list that she has, her mental loyalty list that she will carry in her mind without even knowing about it. That was just at the cost of me removing two screws and sacrificing maybe 10 quid, 10, 20 quid, something like that. So over the next couple of weeks, she had another, she had a few other little jobs that she wanted doing. You know, like she managed to, she asked if I could get, she could get data off the hard drive. And I said, yes. Yeah. So she, she called me back a few times um, to get some files off and yeah, help her set up a new laptop and all these types of things. So she paid me for those 
because she was happy to do it because she could trust because I'd already shown her, you know, I could be trusted in, you know, just being an all right guy, not trying to rip her off. So awesome. She paid me for a few jobs, you know, maybe tea, had some biscuits. She even asked what biscuits I liked and got some special biscuits in for me, which is awesome. Um, yeah. And then she started tagging me in any, any time anyone asked a question, in the Facebook groups or anything, she always tagged me in it, um, and she she had quite a big network. So I was started to get loads of like responses from people who trusted her. You know, automatically they're going to trust well not not fully, but they're going to trust me over the other people just saying you know same as she did. I'll you know, I'll do it for forty quid. After doing a few quite a few repair jobs in in my local area, which was fine, it was okay, but I started getting people. Uh, asking me to do how to do like pretty basic things on the computers i mean like super basic like how to add music to an ipod from their laptop or how do i how do i back up my photos what's the best way to store them and how can i print my photos you know things that we take well okay i say we I'm, again i'm doing the same i'm just assuming things that i take for granted that i don't even think about from doing the job that i had it's a skill that i've i've learned you know i'm I'm not the best computer technician in the world. I'm not the smartest technician in the world. I don't know everything about everything. But I knew way more than the people I was helping. Which is all they need. You know, that's that's what they need. And it's someone they can trust and like and who knows what to do. And I was always honest and if I didn't know what to do, I didn't just try and lie and make myself sound great that I knew everything. I just said, to be honest, I'm not quite sure. Why don't we look it up? So I would sit there with them and figure it out with them. I say, you know, if you want, if you want to figure it out, let's sit down and figure it out. I, I'm not sure. Let, let's see what we can find. And they always appreciated that, to be honest, because I, I didn't charge by the hour. I just said, yeah, I could do that for you. You know, here's my, here's my my fee or whatever it was. Um. So I started showing them, and I started to really enjoy showing them how to do these things because they. I, you know, I felt bad that nobody had helped them before. I think where are all the, you know, I mean, IT and computers and phones, it's not a rare thing anymore. It's not like, I remember like 15, 20 years ago, it was quite an in-demand in skill because not everybody had grown up with PCs and and, and stuff, really. Not, not like, I mean, I, I always had a PC. I always played computer games, had PCs, messed around with them. Just mainly so I could play games. I only learned PCs just so I could play games and figure them out. So, you know, without knowing it, there's that's a skill tree that I have. Um, so, like I said, I, I was started to really enjoy showing them how to do stuff. You know, the most common thing that they said when I said, you know, how come no one's ever helped you before? And they always sort of said, well, I didn't want to bug my family, you know, or my son, you know, my son, my family. I didn't want to annoy them when they came over to see me. I didn't want to ask them a ton of like computer questions and then them think, oh, you know, because sometimes they get annoyed at me and they, they just end up doing it for me and they don't show me how to do it. They just fix the problem and then disappear for a week or two and then the problem comes back and I have to wait for them to come back. So it was quite a common thing that I heard that they just didn't want to bug their own family because... You know, we've all had the parents on the phone, you know, click, click that button. And they're saying, what? I don't understand. And you try and help them. And it is frustrating. I understand. I thought it was quite interesting. Anyway, that, I thought that whole thing was quite interesting. And I didn't really think anything of it. I just thought, yeah, you know, OK, fair enough. Uh, and then then I started helping. Uh, she was like a semi-retired lady called Rosa. She was lovely. And she she was in the exact situation. You know, she had some basic she had some really basic computer skills and she could do stuff you know she wasn't completely new to it but she didn't know how to do things like she didn't know how to do online banking and pay the bills pay her phone bill online so she just wanted someone to sit down and and go through it with her so like i said i didn't charge by the hour because people because oh, okay people tend to learn at different speeds and i never like putting an exact time on it i don't want to sit there and put a put a uh you know, sand timer on and go, right, okay, we better figure this out before this runs out or I'm off. So I, I don't like the time pressure. So I just said, look, what is the problem you're trying to do? I'd say one thing, okay, you want to know how to put music on your iPod? Okay, let me come round 11 o'clock and we'll sit down and figure it out. 
Now, in my mind, I never told them the time limit. I, in my mind, I just said, you know, I just said, in my mind, I thought, okay, if I can do this in two hours, that's that's a quite a long time, but we should be able to get a lot done in that time. So that's that's a, I put two hour time limit in my mind. That went on for a few months, you know, quite regularly. If it, you know, every once a week, twice a week for a few months, and it wasn't just because she made me sandwiches and cake and tea and biscuits and rolls and all sorts of she'd take orders for what I want next time I come it definitely was nothing to do with that so after a while she started telling her friends about me um and, and it made me laugh because I it always came with a warning of yeah Richard will help you out but don't steal him he's mine <laughs> which is it always made me laugh and it was really nice to hear you know it's only it's a silly comment but she really appreciated me coming around because it wasn't just fixing her computer problems She'd tell me how a week was. She'd ask me about my family. Um, you know, it was really nice. It was actually, you know, I enjoyed it. I was, I, again, I started feeling bad charging her money because I really enjoyed going around there. Um, but she gained computer skills. She learned how to do stuff. She got someone coming around to talk to her. I mean, you know, it, we kind of both won, which was, which was lovely. It was really nice. So after a while, I started helping a few of her friends. And again, I got quite a similar reaction, to be honest. It, it always went really well. And I, but I only ever charged... Because it is a difficult thing to price up. So I, I charged £25 a session. Um, I chose 25 because I was kind of hoping, if I chose 25 that they might round it up to 30 just because it's easier to get three £10 notes out of the thing rather than get a £5 note, which was a bit sneaky, but it actually worked quite a lot of the time. Quite a lot of the time, it just give me, ah, just keep the 30, it's fine. You know, I was like, oh, okay, if, if you're sure. Bonus, awesome. After a, another few months of doing that, I was then contacted on Facebook. And it was a lady, I don't actually know where she came from. I can't remember now. It was a lady called Mary. And she sent me a message. Uh, she had some small computer issues and she heard that, you know, I was, I was the person to come and help her. So I was like, okay, fine. So I went round to her house. It was a it was a Windows login problem. I went round there. I fixed it, and she said, "Okay, that's fantastic. Can you can you just tell me what what happened? Yeah, you know, what why why uh, why the problem came up? Just so I understand what what was going on." Again, she was a a retired lady, uh, but she was um, just generally interested. So I said, "No worries." So I sat down with her and I just explained what the problem had been and how what I did to fix it. Um, and then after about half an hour, she was really happy. Again, all went perfectly well. She was, she loved it. So I went, okay, great, thank you. Collected my 25, 30 pounds, and I left. A few days later, she called me again and said her husband's PC is also having similar problems. But they were, they were slightly different, but similar problems. Um, but he he also wants to, he kind of wants to know how to fix it himself because he's a bit of a hands-on kind of guy, so he wanted to know how to fix it. And so would I mind coming over, even though I'm kind of sabotaging myself here, would I mind coming over and showing him how to fix it or how to figure it out? Uh, I turned up and then I sat next to him in the, you know, with a chair and I went through the fix. So we, you know, I showed him how to, you know, but it sounds silly, but how to Google the problem. It's amazing how, how many people don't do that. So I showed him how to search for the problem, which sort of websites and forums to trust their information. Um, and then I made him take notes, which is really important, I find. Make them take notes on the stuff they're doing. Because if you take them or give them anything, yeah, they're not going to read it. They're not going to take notes. So get them to write some notes down so you can remember it for next time. Then before um, I left, after several cups of tea, uh, Mary told me that she actually used to be a private school head teacher head mistress i don't know what the politically correct term is head person um, and then after she did that she she turned into um a teacher assessor so she'd go around the country assessing teaching and teaching skills and all this sort of stuff so that's what she used to do and she actually told me that i would make an excellent teacher as i'm really calm i explain things really well and I had a naturally good manner for teaching. And I should, you know, I should, she told me I should seriously look into doing something within the teaching area in the future. Now, you know, 
this this is a huge compliment from anyone if anyone says you're a really good teacher you know that's really nice to hear but the fact that she was you know really was qualified in assessing teachers so that was a massive compliment for me as i'd never you know i'd never even given teaching a, a thought you know not not seriously obviously i like i said I, I knew i was enjoying it but i never really gave it a serious thought about ever doing it as a, as a job after all, i said thank you very much you know, and I, I returned there for a few times to help him with some other problems. Uh, but I didn't really do anything with the information. And now, if I look back, that should have been my catalyst to move forward. But I wasn't really in the right, not the right place in my life. But it, things were up in the air. I was all over the place. I couldn't really start organising and look into teaching. And like I said, I, didn't, I don't really want to be a teacher. I, I'm not a big, never really appealed to me. It got to the point where I, I really needed a regular job because all these little odd jobs were great but I never knew what jobs were coming I didn't know how much money I'd have at the end of the month so it was it was getting a bit harsh and I could never because I was only doing you know my 25 pound repairs or whatever it was I could never really earn if you're doing you know two or three jobs a day maybe but I was never at that sort of regular level so I couldn't guarantee any it anyway I needed some regular money I took a job as a gas meter reader which, oh my God, which I've actually done before, about 13 years ago. So I kind of knew what the job was. So I applied for it and I got it, gas meter reader, which basically consisted of walking about 10 miles a day with a backpack and you know, with all your meter reading junk in, the, in it. And I was walking all over London. You know, I lived in South London at the time and I was going into central London. I was climbing up horrible 1960s tower blocks with no lifts in and crazy horrible abandoned place it was horrendous it was so bad you know come rain or shine you were out you know 9 10 11 hours a day just walking everywhere reading meters getting the door slammed in my face people you know shouting abuse at me and you know well, there's one reason, one reason I began to really dislike London. Because once you start going into people's houses and talking to them, you know, there's some horrible people out there. I'll say that. And London is the mecca of it. It's horrendous. So anyway, what was great about the job is I was left alone all day. So I could listen to audiobooks and podcasts and loads of stuff. So I made full use of it. And I started discovering like business podcasts and audiobooks and all the entrepreneur oh, I forgot, entrepreneur oh, all the preneur stuff all the information that was out there so at least I didn't feel like I was totally wasting my day because otherwise you'd just be walking around all day in silence you know again I don't want to sit there listening to the radio all day I can't deal with that so at least I felt I was being slightly productive again, this is slightly off topic I you know I admit freely I am a terrible employee don't employ me if you're going to offer me don't employ me because i'm always thinking about how i can Im improve it and benefit from myself so i'm always looking any job i get i'm always thinking why are you doing it this way it's so clear to me that this is a terrible way of doing it and there's an obvious path to fix it so i'm always looking how to improve stuff in other people's businesses which I, I, you know, I mean to, I mean to help. I'm not, I'm not doing it to be, to be. I'm the righteous one. I'm doing it because I'm thinking, wow, you guys could be doing so much better if you just chose this platform over that one. Or, you know, why are you buying your boxes from this company? They're much dearer, and these guys are much better. So anyway, don't employ me. I'm terrible. You know, without meaning to, I kind of st going back to the sort of helping people. I kind of stumbled upon quite a large group of people with very similar problems you know I was getting kind of similar questions about stuff all the time they knew they had a problem whichever whatever it was you know a lot of them were retired or you know close to retirement so they had the time and they had money because I wasn't charging crazy money so they had the money to do it they knew what it was and they had the time to to, to sit down so it was kind of like the perfect storm uh, for someone to come in and help them and well, luckily at the time that that was me uh, but like I said doing it how I was doing it was not really scalable because it was just me and and I don't like 
And the other idea I thought, I thought, well, okay, well maybe if I can get some a group of these people and like teach them in a teach them in a group, it's obvious. But yeah, if I could group them together into a, like a hall or something and then show them how to fix stuff in a in a group. But on these types of subject, the the problems they have are really sort of individual problems that they have. So you you need to do it on your own PC. So if they've got a problem, especially if they've got a problem with their PC, I need to be at their PC showing them how to do it. There's no point in coming to a hall with a random PC that I've connected up and trying to repeat the problem because that doesn't help them when they get home. So you kind of have to do it individually and without just, you know, sitting in a big hall. It's just rubbish. Who likes doing that? That's you know, it's like computer class at school. No, You don't get anything done. You know, you end up wait, spending half an hour with one person while everyone else is just sitting there twiddling their thumbs. Rubbish. So that wasn't really scalable for me. So yeah, so I didn't go any further with that. Now, if we fast forward about now, about two years, so I've done the gas meter reading, I've done that for a while. So two years later, we are where we are now. We're here. So I discovered a website called Udemy. Yeah, I'm sure you've heard of it. If you haven't, it's called Udemy. U-D-E-M-Y, by the way. Uh, so I discovered it a while back. And it's just a website that stores courses. Um, so people sell their courses. They create a course and they set it on Udemy. So it's just a portal, really. And the courses they have are like, they've got a huge library of courses. I mean, it's basically any subject you can think of. You know, I've taken quite a few of the courses. You know, some of them are really good. You know, the people are, teach it really well. And others, not really. So some are terrible, some are great. Mainly they're pretty good standard. But... You know, when you're watching anything, sometimes you just connect with the person or you enjoy how they teach because everyone teaches and learns differently. So you, you watch it and you think, yeah, this guy or this girl's really good. I like listening to him or her. And you complete the course. And then other ones, you, you, you try the course and then 10 minutes in, you, you can't stand their voice or the way they present it or they skip over stuff. It's really, it can be really hit and miss. Going back to, to the teaching that I sort of did, I always... I always preferred teaching the slightly older people. So maybe 45, 50 and over, anything, I mean, but probably 50 and over because they always, they always had more patience. They weren't as rushed. They didn't keep picking up their phone every 30 seconds to check a notification. And they really wanted to learn. They had, you know, they, they had these problems. A lot of them had these problems for years and no one's, no one's helped them. So they really wanted to learn how to help themselves. And they, and, yeah, you know, they were just taking their time. It was great. What I thought about, again, back on back on topic here, that I, I'm considering. I'm still I'm still looking into it. I'll explain how. So I'm considering creating a course for the sort of fifty. I'll say in bracket fifty and over crowd who kind of want to start their own website or business or blog. Because yeah, you know, they want to start something for themselves. So they're going to need some basic computer skills already. But they've got an idea of that something they want to start and yeah, business they want to start themselves. But it's always the the technology side that's that's in the way. You know, it's just a bit beyond their skill set and they don't really know who to ask. And you know, and you, you start Googling website services and you know, some of them are thousands, you know. So it, very easy to get put off by having someone create a website for you. And there's also a lot of trust as well, because if you're paying someone you know, you've got to hope that they, well, it's like anything, you've got to hope that they do a good job for you and hope that they do what you want. Otherwise, you don't want to, don't want to feel ripped off by paying someone something you don't like. Over the last few years, I've, you know, I've created so many WordPress-based websites. Just, you know, just messing around. You know, just, you know, if I had an idea for something, the first thing I'd always do, come up with a name, create a web, buy the domain name, you know, I've, I think I've got about 40 domain names I own. So, <laughs> so I'd buy the domain name, stick a WordPress install up, get a website up and just mess around with it. After a few times, I say after, after about 50 times, putting a WordPress site up is something I don't even have to think about. So I never really saw that as being able to do that as a skill because it's just something, oh yeah, just click, 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 you know, done. But it's only because I've done it so many times. If you've never touched WordPress or a website, you wouldn't have the foggiest of how to do that. 
You know, I mean, it isn't difficult. I'll say now, it's not hard. But it is hard if you've never done it. And it is also hard if you've got no real interest in learning how to do it from scratch. That's the other thing. But that's, you know, but that, like I said, that's the point. The fact is, anyone can do this, but not everybody does. I want to create a course that shows people how to, you know, start. If you, you've got an idea, or even, I may even go back to as far as, you know you want to start something yourself. Let's figure out how to find your idea from the skills that you already have, how you choose a name for that project or idea, um, how to buy the domain name. You know, again, these are three really simple things, but they're simple. It doesn't mean they're easy. I think that's the, the point. So how to buy a domain name, um, how to get a word, how to get some hosting. Obviously, you need hosting for your website. So how to buy hosting and how to get a WordPress install done, uploaded and connecting your domain name. Everything, basically. So from I want to go from idea to name, domain name getting a website up, and that is it. I don't want to turn it into some huge course. I just want I want it to be focused on one thing, and that is getting your idea to the point that it has its own website. And then the point is, you can always re-watch this course. For any other ideas that they get, they can re-watch the course and just apply the same thing again. And after a couple of times, they're going to know it. You know, just like I do. They don't have to watch the course again because they will know what to do but it's always there as a reference. And then in the future, I could always move on to um, how to set up a store, how to sell items, how to get a t-shirt business started. I know that that's all, it's all again, it's all simple stuff, but it doesn't mean it's easy, but it's easily showable you know, on a, on a course. Then, you know, again, I've done some, I've, I've done a few Facebook ads and so I kind of know how it works. Again, I'm, I am no expert at all, but I know how to run a Facebook ad. So I may look at learning that myself. I may take a course on Udemy and figure that out myself. And then I can just share that knowledge on a second course or follow-up course. But let's see, but the idea is to get this simple course up first. See how that goes. If it gets popular, great, you know. If it if it doesn't, you know what I've got to lose. You know, it's it's just a it's just a plan. I mean, the reason why I like the idea, of course, a lot of the courses on Udemy are like nine ninety nine or eleven ninety nine, so they're not expensive. But once they're up, they're up, and I can sort of leave it up. And it, there's always the chance of it making me money. That's the point. So I can create the course once, but then it can be used for a long time. Obviously, I can update it to certain segments as as the sort of time goes on which is easy enough but then also I can use the content that I have in the course to do some other stuff on my, you know on my own website or sell the course somewhere else whatever I haven't again I haven't figured this out I'm, this is just my idea that I just wanted to share so that is where I'm I'm going with it of course as I'm doing the course I will share um, any problems I find yeah you know, how the platform how Udemy is for for course creation i've got no idea all i've done is sign up for it you know as a, as a uh, creator i've not looked at anything yet so uh that will be another a future episode of how i find that and that is kind of it that is my idea so i'll let you know how it goes and where i'm at with it i'm pretty busy at work at the minute so uh, again recording these podcasts is, is hard enough finding the time so eventually it will be a regular spot i promise but at the minute, it's just whenever I can get some time to sit down and record it. It takes me a while to write up some ideas and some notes and you know where I want to go with it, and to get the peace and quiet to actually to actually do the recording. So that is this week's episode. So just to the admin section again, um, we have another iTunes review. How cool is this? So this is the third iTunes review which is amazing. Thank you so much. I, you know, I've had, oh, oh, just, just before I get into that, we are now on, going to check it live now. Let me actually refresh the page. Look at this. So we've had 64 downloads. I say, yeah, I say we, it's just me here, but I'm including you, you, you guys in this. 64 downloads of the podcast in total ever. So, which is awesome. Thank you so much. I love it. Um, 
So that's just an update on the numbers. As I said, I'd keep you updated. So back to the review. So we've had a review by United Lad Stevie. Seems to be a Steve theme going on, but it, it's a different one, I promise. United Lad Stevie, who says, fantastic podcast, really enjoy listening to the ideas, and it's a good listen on my commute to and from work. Can't wait for the next episode. Five stars. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Steve, Stevie, or United Lad, whatever your first name is. Uh, that's really kind of you. I really appreciate it, and I really appreciate all you know, all three of you guys who have left messages uh, as, as reviews. It's really, it's really awesome of you. Thank you. And if anyone else wants to leave a little, little iTunes review, please do. It's. Uh, I'll leave a link to the uh, review set if I can. I'll leave a link to the, how you leave a review in iTunes. Um, I'd really appreciate it if you did. Thank you very much. And again, I need to. I tell you what I need to do. I need to record this and just plug this on at the end of the recording. You can email me at cashflowpirate at gmail dot com. You can find me on Instagram, on Twitter, Cashflow Pirate, on both of those. The Facebook group. Come on, guys. Where, where is everybody? We've had 64 downloads. This should be heaving. The Facebook group. Come and join the Facebook group. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know the URL. I never know it. It's Cashflow Pirate. It, oh, yeah, it's not hard. The, the big blue turquoisey sign. Find that on Facebook. Come and join. Come and join in. And thank you. If you're already there, thank you very much. Welcome. Hello. And I think that is everything for this week. I, I do I do have lots of other ideas, but again, I'm just trying to find regular slots for stuff at the moment. But I'll keep going. Um, I have I've had some other feedback actually. But sorry, going off topic again. I'll go back onto it. I had some other feedback that I won't go into now because I don't know how much they want me to share. But I've had some feedback about um, from a listener who wants to create her own YouTube channel. She's got an idea. She wanted to create her own YouTube channel. So she asked me for just some advice. Do I know anything about creating YouTube channels? You know, I know some. So I passed on whatever knowledge I had. So she set that up. And she's in the uh, process of testing some sort of microphone and video options that we spoke about. So hopefully that'll be up soon. So it, again, I'll, I'll have to check with her what she wants me to share and not share. Uh, but if that goes well, I'll I'll share that link as to um, what she's doing she can check out a youtube channel and see how it goes so that is again someone starting from from the start which is what's well, what we're all about isn't it so hopefully i have some more information on that soon okay well that i think that is long enough for an episode so i'll leave you to your whatever you're doing until next time ciao for now goodbye <laughs>